This video kicks off our reproductive block. We'll talk about the female reproductive system first, uh, physio, pathology of it, and then we'll talk about the male system later. So let's start with the female reproductive tract. Grossly, you have your ovaries, and these make eggs, and that egg travels down the fallopian tubes until it hits the uterus. The uterus is the womb. This is where eggs, if fertilized, will implant. This is where your baby grows, your fetus grows. So just say womb. Then at the lower part of your uterus, you have something called your cervix. This is basically the lower portion of your uterus. And this lower portion, the cervix, connects to the vault leading to the outside world. That is your vagina. The part of the cervix facing the uterus is called your endocervix. The part of the cervix facing the vagina or the outside is your ectocervix. And there's a little hole called the os, and that os allows inflow for things such as semen or outflow for things like menstruation. And on the outside of the vaginal vault is just your outside skin. So that'd be your vulva. That includes your labias and your vestibule. So I'll just put labias, vestibule. And that is the female reproductive system. That's what it looks like grossly. You should also know histologically what the epithelium is. We'll talk about that because we want to see what it is normally and if there's change, we know something's wrong. So what is the epithelium normally? Well, we'll start from the outside. So your vulva is your outside skin and like your outside skin, it is keratinized, stratified, squamous. Skin stratified squamous just for protection's sake. Once we move inside to the vagina, into the vaginal vault, we lose that keratin. So it becomes non-keratinized, stratified squamous. Now your uterus is simple columnar. Here's the thing. You don't just go from stratified squamous to simple columnar like that. Your cervix, the middle part, the connecting part, actually you can see the change from stratified squamous to columnar. And we call that the transformational zone. Sometimes known as the squamo, squamous, columnar junction. You can see that junction very sharply. The pictures will be in the notes. You can see that change from squamous to simple columnar. Moving on up from the uterus to the fallopian tubes, also simple columnar, but your fallopian tubes help move your egg. And the thing that helps move the egg is cilia. So your fallopian tube is simple columnar plus cilia. Lastly, your ovaries. Your ovaries are unique. They're simple cuboidal. That is your female reproductive system grossly and histologically. That's what it is normally few more things. Your uterus and your ovaries aren't just there willy-nilly. They're suspended by strong ligaments that hold them in place. You'll need to know these ligaments because I'm doing OBGYN right now and the first thing that happens in a hysterectomy is the surgeon will ask you what ligament they're cutting and if you don't want to be like me i.e. forgot the ligaments and look like a complete idiot. So I'm going to teach you the ligaments, know them for the step and also remember them after the step because if you're doing OBGYN um, rotations, they're going to ask you that. The ligament that suspends the ovaries is called your suspensory, suspensory ligament. Suspensory lig, also known as in fundibulo pelvic ligament. 
You need to know this because not only does it suspend your ovaries, but it contains the blood vessels. So ovarian vessels. Very important you know which ligaments hold blood vessels. There are two of them, and this is the first one. The second one is your cardinal ligament, which connects your uterus to the side wall. Your cardinal ligament contains, so cardinal, contains your uterine vessels, the vessels to your uterus. You absolutely need to know these two, not only because they hold your ovaries and your uterus in place, but they contain the vessels to your ovary and your uterus. One thing that's not a ligament that you need to know is that your ureters, which drain your kidneys to your bladder, go under the cardinal ligament and can be damaged if you try and cut it. So the three main things that complicate surgery are gonna be are gonna be the ligaments that hold the vessels and the ureter. So your infundibular ligament, your cardinal ligament, and your ureters, or ICU. That's a helpful way to remember that, okay? So if you cut any of the ICUs, you can have complications. Moving back on to ligaments, there's one more ligament that holds the ovary to the uterus. That's called your ovarian ligament. So ovarian ligament holds the ovaries to the uterus. That way it's pulled on one side and pulled on the other and it stays nicely in place. The round ligament connects the uterus to the labia. This ligament is important during pregnancy because it connects your uterus to your labia and when you're pregnant your uterus grows and it grows and grows and it pulls on that ligament and can cause round ligament Pain. Very common presenting complaint in pregnancy is that round ligament pain. Last but not least is your broad ligament. Your broad ligament, I can't really draw. Your broad ligament is just a saran wrap that smacks these ligaments together, keeps them in place. That's your broad ligament. That's the saran wrap. Those are all your ligaments. Grossly, no, the female reproductive system. No, histologically. And next we're gonna get into pathology. We're gonna start pathology systematically. We're gonna start from the outside, aka the vulva, and then move on in. So we'll talk about the vulva, then the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, and lastly, the ovaries. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.